Uh, I've got uh, Vina Maposa from Kaiser Chiefs, uh, the communication uh, person at Kaiser Chiefs, is going to tell us about their preparations for uh, this game. Let me welcome you, uh, Bravina. Welcome to the show and how are you doing? We're doing fine. Thanks very much, Aubrey, and thanks for having us and be grateful to be on your show. Greetings to your audience and um, everyone who's following your show. You know, but let me start here. We, 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 we got good news this week, if not day before yesterday or yesterday, that uh, Miss Jessica Mutau has been, uh, you know, appointed to participate in CAF, which is a big news for Kaiser Chiefs, not only for Kaiser Chiefs, but their country too. And then, uh, but uh, people who know Jessica Mutau, she has been there for a while, and I think it's a good appointment, and I think she'll add value. And uh, for information, Bravina, I do watch uh, Kaiser Chiefs' uh, show, and I know she plays a major role as far as that is concerned. And you can see the maturity in that show that she has uh, matured. Now, there's anything that you want to tell us and the world about this development? Yeah, it's a big development indeed, as you mentioned, and uh, we are grateful and just uh, so we put it uh, proper, it is um, um, an appointment that came up um, just uh, a week ago that we welcomed and it is about uh, her uh, being part of the Women Football Standing Committee, the organizing committee from 2022 to 2024. So we received the news, obviously, via CAF, and we welcome the news. We congratulated her. We gave her the blessings of um, going on to represent the club and the country very well at CAF. Uh, as you all know, that uh, playing a role at uh, CAF gives uh, the club uh, you know, an opportunity to have someone inside CAF that will obviously share the knowledge uh, that she gained from the club, as well as us as the club, will gain from her participation because we're also in the developing stages of uh, a women's uh, football team. So her involvement will give us an opportunity to have a, a closer links with uh, CAF. But not only that, remember, it's a South African as well. So SAFA um, as well will benefit uh, through her work with uh, CAF uh, to develop, uh, you know, uh, football in S South Africa, as you know, we've got the Hollywood Bets uh, uh, Women's League, we've got Sussels uh, Women's League, all those that are developing will also gain from this particular um, milestone. And uh, if you look at it further, if you are at CAF, you are closer to FIFA and you're able to also assist from that point of view. So we are grateful and we congratulate her. She deserves it. She's been in football her whole life and she has earned her stripes to get uh, at that level. So, so far so good. And from our side, we look forward to her participation and we share the best. You know what, once you have just said that, um, Kaiser Chiefs has really, you know, entrenched itself in terms of the continent. Uh, we know that uh, Al Ahli is your facility to train. And one of the things that were mentioned by our own coach, Peter Musimani, that your facility is one of the two best in Africa. So that occurs well for Kaiser Chiefs. So you guys are doing a good job. You need to be congratulated as far as that is concerned. I'll link this to what I'm following up in terms of football. I've seen more and more players especially for former, more, uh, former players, articulating or acknowledging that uh, Kaiser Chiefs is the most professionally run team. The last person that I hear, which is very interesting, is Tuso Pala. Tuso Pala played for Chiefs, played for Sundowns, played for Supersport, played for Platinum Stars. For him to come out and say, Chiefs is the best well-run team. So guys, I'm sure if you hear that, it makes you feel proud. 
What do you want to say about that? Yeah, look, we are an institution. We are big and uh, where we are at the moment, we obviously uh, pride ourselves with what we have uh, created over the years. Uh, the two, um, you, you know, the, the, the club that has been developed over the years, uh, you're talking about over five decades now, uh, since 1970. So when you look at what uh, the chairman has developed, it's, uh, it's, it's not only about chips and it's not only about football. It's, it's, it's a kind of black excellence. I mean, uh, there are not many things that uh, us as black people can identify with and pride ourselves as having started from the ground. So if you look um, at Kaiser Chiefs from 1970, uh, Chincha Boy Boy uh, playing his football in America, coming back to South Africa, and uh, as part of giving back, finding his former team Orlando Pirates, uh, having some problems, collecting a few guys who came to him for solutions. And uh, from Pefeni in the backyard, in the bedroom, used as a camp, you know, the dining rooms uh, used as a camping site for players as new as the late days in Jolene, Ben Cetrodi. Um, when you look at Jackie Masike and all those players, the late Ryder Mofuke uh, have stayed in that house in Pefeni as a clubhouse, moving over to Park Town and um, for, for at some point, uh, I think, uh, uh, yeah, we were in Park Town and uh, various other places where we trained until we came to Naturena at um, Kaiser Chiefs Village, where you just mentioned that we've received many visitors, not only uh, Ahli. Uh, we've had a FIFA group of technicians coming to us at some point uh, to visit and see our facilities, giving it a thumbs up. We had uh, visitors from CAF itself visiting us many occasions, giving us a thumbs up. We've had uh, Lotha Matthias, a renowned German captain coming to visit us and also alluding to the fact that he hasn't seen something like that. Uh, we've had uh, Thierry Hendricks of this world visiting us also alluding to the fact that uh, what uh, is at Kaiser Chiefs is one of the uh, things that um, you know are rare in the world of football. So we pride ourselves with the, the logo, Kaiser Chiefs logo, uh, the badge uh, that uh, and that Muta has come up with, with his compatriots and many other uh, forefathers who have, you know, uh, sweated and uh, shed blood and tears to see this. Uh, to be where it is, because Ntatemuta always reminds us that it is not always, oh, it is not all about him. It is about uh, the many men and women who have uh, uh, suffered uh, to make Kaiser Chiefs uh, what it is. And us, as members of staff, uh, we feel, you know, privileged to be serving this brand. And uh, we look at it and say, you know, glory be to God uh, for having given us this opportunity. I'm sure by now you know that I'm not a Chiefs fan, but uh, one thing for sure that I can tell you is um, Dr. Kaiser, that's one person I look at and, and learn from him at a distance. I don't know him. I've never met him. He was a friend to my uncle, the late uncle. Uh, but I learned a lot from him. And then, uh, so that doesn't mean that if I'm not a fan of Kaiser Chiefs, I cannot learn from him. I listened to one of his uh, interview when he said uh, they went to, you know, Naturena, by then it was a dump site. And then he had other directors said, guys, I want us to come up with something. Yeah, and they said, hey, hey, Chief, why are you bringing us? <laughs> it's yeah. like current um, land and what the view. And then uh, the guys were ch chicken out, but he finally went uh, ahead with his dream and look what it is today. So th that was in party. Um, I don't want us to discuss that because I want us to look us at the game that is coming. Uh, but it, part of the introduction, 
is to congratulate you guys on the good job that you are doing as Kaiser Chiefs. Uh, all of us are proud of Kaiser Chiefs. Like I said, we are looking at Kaiser Chiefs, take some lessons there and see uh, what can we improve in our lives, in our businesses, having learned from Kaiser Chiefs. Now, this coming weekend, as I said, now let's start here. Guys, Kaiser Chiefs, are you going to uh, honor Mamelodi Sundowns with a guard of honor on Sunday? We will, we, we are aware of that. Uh, it's, it's a logical call. I mean, it's not something that we need to be reminded of as Kaiser Chiefs because we remember we've enjoyed the same status um twice um played them at Lucas Muripa, I think, in 2013 or so, where they gave us a cut of honor after clinching the APSA premiership. Mm -hmm. So we will um we have finalized uh, I think the match preparations in terms of logistics and the team is still going to go into their pre-match uh, training session tomorrow. And thereafter, we will be getting on to what we call activations. So activations are matters that uh, are added onto the program and the running order. It means these are, are not obligatory matters. These are matters that are subject uh, to decisions. And uh, we are sure that um, once we've ticked all the boxes uh, tomorrow, um, at six o'clock, I, I even have the time. That's where we're making those uh, calls, including that of honor. But the, 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 the fact of the matter is that a guard of honor for a team that has done so well, um, it is a clarion call that uh, we have to respond to. And as to how we respond to it, um, we will uh, definitely um make uh, that uh, confirmation tomorrow at six o'clock and it's just a matter of procedure i don't see anything hindering us from making uh, um conducting that honorable act well i'm gonna start here i'm not saying this because uh, i'm a friend to arthur but i'm gonna say this ever since arthur took over he never had a chance to train the boys remember Games are coming thick and fast, back to back, and sometimes you travel and so on. But over and above, we can see a little bit some changes in the team, uh, which tells that Arthur is doing a good job. Uh, who, which hopefully, I, I, I hope that he continues. And then uh, I listened to him again in his press conferences, because it's not only about coaching. You also want to hear when a person talks. I hear him talking a lot of sense. I hear mm -hmm. him showing a lot of braveness, which is what you need, all right? When I say brave, yes. I was impressed when he said, as far as he is concerned, the quality of players that you have are not at the level of Kaiser teams that we know. Not many mm -hmm. people can come up with that statement. And then for me, that shows that Arthur is brave. Arthur is a leader. So do you share the sentiment that I share that I have I've seen some improvements in the team ever since he took over? And um, let let us do, let, um, um, let us talk about Arthur as a player and uh, see, we call him a son of Kaiser Chiefs. So, you're talking about someone who's entrenched in the system is like a furniture um, in the system. Um, what uh, is happening is that Arthur grew up at Kaiser Chiefs and um, of course he had spells with other teams, temp, uh, just brief spells, but his, his history is written at Kaiser Chiefs. So he knows the culture, he knows what we do, he knows what's expected of him at Kaiser Chiefs. And uh, he has earned his stripes. I think he's got several medals with us, um, including Mandela Cup CAF uh, medal. Um, and uh, him as a footballer, he plays kind of football that is, uh, has won us even trophies. So if you talk about Arthur, you talk about Kaiser Chiefs. And he has uh, coached in the 
a multi-choice disk challenge now this uh, they call it this uh, DSTV disk challenge um yes produced it's got uh, players that you can point um that oh, this one played under of um, Jabulo Blom is there and Gezana is there many others Godino left for overseas you still have Savelo Hadevus coming up we've got Nkosin Pile Novo in the team We've got the Epimashianis in the team. We've got Indian Tias in the team. Uh, you've got Bruce Fumas. There are players that are all over. Captain of Stellenbosch, uh, Macheke, I think he's got a new surname now. Um, there are many players that went through the system of APA. And when you look at all that, some total of it, and what we want to do as the club currently, we want to get back to Kaiser Chiefs' uh, style of play, culture, and um, uh, all elements that made people to follow this club. And Alpha is equal to the task. And uh, just as uh, we have mentioned, we just left with three games, Sundowns, Kukuni, as well as Swallows. And thereafter, the league will be finished, and the club will make its uh, announcements as to who will take the club. Uh, or the team for it. But as things stand, Alpha is grinding for results and is on a game uh, against Garland. We look forward to win against Sundowns on Sunday. We just want to get into the second spot on the log because remember, we tasted the sweetness of playing in the uh, Kev Champions League under COVID conditions, which were not easy. So we didn't enjoy that sweetness. There were no supporters travel restrictions, COVID uh, problems in between. So I think uh, the club will be looking at all those elements that this man pushed us to top eight uh, position last season, got us to the final of CAF Champions League last season. And um, yeah, you connect the dots and just, uh, uh, you know, hope that the club will make uh, the decision that is favorable for Arthur to take the club forward. Well, while we are still there, you know, I like comparison. I listened to Pep Guardiola at some point. Uh, Arsenal was having problems with Ateta. He said, guys, this guy is a very good coach. He said, guys, this guy, I think he's even better than me. They listened. Asen Wenger identified Ateta while he was still playing. Say, guys, this guy is a good coach. He's got a very good understanding of football. And look at Arsenal now. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he was brave enough to say, Ozil, I'll show you the door. Mm -hmm. He was brave enough to say, Abe Mayong, you are scoring goals. But if you are not going to respect this team, I'm going to show you the door. You see, I'm mm -hmm. coming to, to that and say, I don't know you'll confirm or not confirm, it's up to you. Yeah. That uh, Zoom, Zuma, it is alleged that he disrespected the coach. So consequently, Kaiser Chiefs took an action of ensuring that he is suspended. If that is the case, I commend you for doing that because ill discipline will definitely cause the rot to the team. Okay, so this is, this is, a good question that you've asked. Look, we cannot contradict ourselves. You yourself started opening the show by saying we are a professional run team. Um, we've had Msholozi, it's our child. I mean, these are little boys to us. I mean, you look at them as players, but to us at the office, we look at them as our children. We care about them. We look after them as much as possible. As you mentioned, uh, many players that have played for us have come to reveal that we are the best run club. Micholozzi has had the problems uh, um, and are judged to have uh, you know, transgressed our code of conduct. And that is unacceptable in any way or form. Um, many other players have done mistakes and uh, we've worked with them to get them back. Sholozi just returned from 10 months of absence uh, for, you know, uh, having issues that he had to resolve. And through the support of the club, remember, 
we, we could have just said we cancel the contract, you've transgressed, we give you your three months salary, goodbye. But 10 months without playing, we keep you, we send you rehabilitations, we work with you back to training and all of that. At the end of the day, 10 months after, you play Stellenbosch, you play Eros, and then you play Cape Town City, you even score a goal, we celebrate and voila, the same night, then you commit other um, alleged offenses. Obviously, they are still alleged and subject to go through disciplinary hearings. That's why we don't reveal even what is the, the misdemeanors. So where we are now, we're hoping that all will go well in the DC. Uh, he will be able to explain himself, but the kind of uh, offenses uh, warranted that uh, he, he removed from uh, the camp and uh, from our training grounds and uh, uh, from the lineups and we, but he is our player and we'll do our best to protect him uh, i mean I think it's one of the finest talents that i personally have ever seen at kaiser chiefs that guy can play football and you just wish that uh, he gets uh, his things right. I've read on newspapers, people revealing his problems, uh, but um, some of those problems are not, uh, um, uh, you know, they're not impossible to work with him to get him back to play. Now tell me, am I going to be correct if I say uh, in Jabulo Ngobo, the mere fact that he could not play the last game was also part of mm -hmm bring him to order after he displayed the disrespect in the last game he played? No, 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 no. Um, let us, uh, so the code of conduct is got specifics. Um, when you get a red card uh, on the pitch, there's specific kind of sanctions. When you don't shake a hand of a coach or show frustration when you've been substituted, the specific um, uh, letters of uh, conduct that you face. So take us in your confidence that uh, Njabulo Ngobo's conduct didn't warrant um, removal from, from the uh, training grounds or from the team sheet. So, and also we have indicated that you will face the might of our uh, disciplinary hearing and we will not leave any un uh, stone unturned for anyone at Kaiser Chiefs to, to break our rules. So just uh, be comfortable that the fact that you see him um, doesn't mean that uh, he's caught free. No, 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 no. Some conducts warrant uh, we empty your pockets some conducts remove you from starting lineup to the to the bench. Some conducts uh, warrants to be removed altogether. You remember the latest we had? Who was it? Kata or Kilampela was the last one. Actually, was the only one since I was the chief that we had the contract uh, terminated because he was uh, probably warranted that type of sanction. So I don't want people to be mistaken and paint everybody with the same brush. You know what, the more I listen to you, the more I become impressed. Uh, when you say each and every conduct has its own sanction. You know, this has been a bothering question to me and say, players get yellow card. Yellow card that cause them not to play the next game. And these are key players. Do the teams take action? That has been my problem all the time. No, the, I can players, reveal players to you. Get, uh, yeah, players get red cards, and that has an impact on the team. Do they, so if you say that, I'm very happy to hear that. And this is for the first time I'm getting you it from you, Kaiser Chiefs. You say? You I can this? reveal to you that uh, yellow cards go with monetary fines. And um, it, we, when we, we find monetary, uh, uh, monetarily, we do hit a player's heart. And uh, remember, the more yellow cards you have, the less chance you stand 
in terms of getting any kind of uh, bonuses. So it's, uh, it, as I said, every conduct is treated with its merit and uh, dealt with accordingly. Yeah, let's look at Sunday. We want the 12th player to come. Uh, we know that Chiefs is strong when it comes to the 12th player. Um, what uh, I know one of your roadshow, you have been on more trading, if I'm not mistaken, various uh, community radio station, and then to ensure that you mobilize. That is why we are also doing this show to make sure that people are coming in numbers. Any other plans of ensuring that uh, people come in numbers? And then um, the restriction, are they still saying half of the stadium or is it full blown 100%? Um, we are at 50% uh, capacity still. Uh, we still sell tickets uh, online majority, but we have uh, ShopRite and Checkers also assisting with over the counter. And then over and above that, uh, we also require supporters to bring the vaccination certificates or test results that are no longer than 72 hours. And then in terms of um, the work that we've done with you included, we've done our media days uh, with you, we've done our press conferences and uh, Sundowns synchronized as well, did the same press conferences because we're unable to do the massive ones that you are used to where we gather you and we come with Sundowns to the same place to talk to media. We've gone um, throughout uh, the past two days We've linked uh, the announcement of Jessica Mutaung to Kef with uh, pushing for the game through television. Uh, we've done massive, massive television work, extensive. Uh, I can tell you now, uh, for those that don't know, I will share with you next time how we measure uh, performance in media. We've got a, a highly uh, technology system that monitors and assesses us, and it gives you even the return of value to the club as well as sponsors on the appearances that we do on media. And I can tell you what we've done the past three days, we'll hit the rooftop. Uh, it's going to be massive. We've done extensive work with our supporters. Um, just yesterday, only one province um, that obviously due to distance and uh, um, that is Western Cape, uh, that is uh, not coming to the match, but the rest of the branches are on their way. All right. Um, that's very exciting to hear that. Now the boys at the training ground, are they motivated? Are they looking forward to play Mamelodi Sundowns? I think beating Mamelodi Sundowns will definitely satisfy a lot of players. And then, uh, so what is the mood? The mood, like. the mood is uh, amazing. It's at the top. Uh, we, as uh, Coach Zwane told you, that uh, if we could get what we see at the grounds, if we could get at the match, I don't think there's any team that will stop us. So we <laughs> we are at a very high spirit. I can't even explain yourself. Um, I mean, the spirit that we are at is that one of, um, um, you know, where we could even send sundowns to the back in the days when the job of talking to media was done by a bus printer, uh, if you yeah. remember, yeah. bus yeah. printer, when they yeah. were saying even, even if they can go on top of the mountain of Molotov, Molotov. and get, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, the, the tranquilizers. Uh, you know, and stuff like that, mm. they will not be chiefs this time. So that's how we feel. We're looking forward to the match. We had um, Niti appealing to Sundown supporters to fill up the stadium to be more than Kaiser Chiefs fans. So we are excited about that. And uh, it's all systems go and we are ready. You know what? You gave me 15 minutes and we spoke more than 15 minutes. Thank you for your time, much appreciated. And then if possible, I would love to interview Jessica Mtaun just to profile her if uh, she's available. Yeah, well, and then uh, yeah, we will, we will. We will. We have a number of your requests that are still in the request list, and we are aware of that. All right. 
Thank you very much, Bravina. Let's talk after the game and 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 and. Anytime, yeah. anytime. Thank anytime. you. And thanks for always uh, being available when I ask you to come on board. And I really thank you. It. I'm not taking it. Oh, very we, no, we we really appreciate you as well, and uh, we wish that you continue with the great job that you're doing, and uh, we wish that you continue to be uh, educative as you've always been on financial matters and other uh, things that you're doing for the people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have you passed my greetings to Vezi? I saw you uh, on a social media. Yeah, no, I told, I told him that uh, this, man, this man likes you. Yeah, what said, is he doing uh, now? What is he doing now? No, I haven't engaged him on his um, activities. I meet him at golf a lot. Yeah. Next time I'll ask him and stuff like that. He looks but old. He, uh, he looks old now. <laughs> no, he looks old, but he's uh, young at heart. You know this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll send you his numbers. You must engage him. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you very much. Eh? Yeah, my bad. Thank you. So I have to go. Thank Goodbye. You. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Bye. Hi, everybody. My name is the Sobre Voice One Fatsi from the Big R or TBR Solution. Uh, one of the companies owned by TBR Solution is the Big R Financial Services, an authorized financial service provider. I'm sure you have noticed that uh, the past few months or so, we've seen a lot of deaths and those deaths are attributed to mental illness. Mental illness can be caused by anything, can be caused by stress, depression, and stress and depression can be caused by a number of things lack of finances or financial problem or social problem or marital problem. So they cause all those problems. Um, we in the financial sector, we see it almost now and again because uh, we work with various organizations like GPF, independent fund organization. But while I'm still there, let me stress, we don't have a formal relationship with GPF, but we work with them because most of our people are from there. Now, working with those people, you know very well that uh, people who are working for the government, they're expected to retire at the age of 60 and above, right? If you retire earlier than that, then you are being penalized by GPF. And sometimes people say, no, I need money. So what do they do? They resign. They say, no, let the money go to my bank account. Once you do that, you are tax heavy. So you need to bear that in mind. Okay, but now let's say for argument's sake, you are 55 as we speak and above, and you are contemplating of either resigning or going on pension in the next three months or so, just drop us a WhatsApp so that we help you to expedite for your payment. Because according to the GPF rules and, and, and pension fund law, once a client or a member receive an SMS that they have received your forms, that means they have 60 days to complete the process. And mind you, the 60 days is a maximum. It doesn't mean it has to take 60 days. It's a maximum. Now, sometimes we see people that don't get their money for two to three, four, five months, six months, even more, or a year or so. And then there, the problem could emanate either from the GPF side, employer side, a, a member himself. So what do we do? We try to expedite that process by making sure that we understand the working, the workings of GPF. If it's a member, we help him to do the right thing. The same with GPF, the same with uh, employer organization. Now, remember, as I have already said that with GPF, it's 60 and above. Now, and then we say, if you're 55 or more, you can contact us. And another good element is this, with the fund that we are working with, you, there is a whole lot of flexibility. You can decide how much you earn. That's how flexible it is. And if let's say you pass on, you and your spouse, uh, you can nominate anyone. You are not limited to your immediate family like your biological children or an officially adopted children. Remember, even your children, they can benefit uh, as long as they're 22 and below. 
But with us, it doesn't matter. They can be above 22, they can be your, your elders, or they will still benefit because you nominated them. And then um, we try by all means that when we take the money from GPF and invest with credible fund organization, we try by all means that you are list texts, all right? And then, uh, and even uh, uh, you are not punished because you are not taking the money because you are taking to another fund. So which means an independent and credible fund. So it means that uh, um, there's no need to tax you more. So those are some of the advantages that are there. So you need to bear that in mind. And then if you want to know more, just drop us a WhatsApp on our WhatsApp number. Then we'll call you back. You don't have to call us. We'll call you back and see how can we expedite it. I thank you.